Our feature today is on Angora. It's our wild fiber that comes from the smallest fiber animal, the Angora rabbit. And there are lots of different types of Angora rabbits, but what I think is unusual is that we really have the monks, particularly the French monks, to thank for domesticating the rabbit back in 600 AD. And from that start, the rabbit has gone from being raised in monasteries to eventually playing a very big role, believe it or not, in World War II as clothing for bomber pilots because it's so warm. And now the Angora trade is being dominated by China. And the reason in part for that is that rabbits are small. They don't need as much uh, housing as you would need for sheep or goats. A family can raise quite a few rabbits in a very small area, and you can also eat a rabbit. In China, it is typical for a family to raise up to 500 rabbits, which seems like an incredible number. Um, and when I went to China, I was very concerned about uh, what I might see. And although I obviously only saw a very small part of the industry, it was very clear that because their livelihood depends on the welfare of the rabbit, they are kept in clean, clean quarters. Um, they are they are well taken care of. Overall, my my opinion was very very favorable. So the question is, what do we use angora fiber for now? And it has always been. Um, a very fuzzy fiber, it's very warm, and you probably don't want anything that's made out of 100% Angora. It would just be so, it would be too, too warm. But it is blended, it is soft, it's extremely soft, and most people do like to blend it with finer wools. However, there are still some garments that are made that are 100% Angora, and when you find those, you have to be careful because there's a very high, high probability that they can felt. Rabbits, although they are very small in size, they're very high in maintenance. They have to be clipped every 72 days. If they don't, the fiber will actually mat on the animal. The animal can get wool block and eventually die. So bunnies come in all forms, whether it's millions of them, being housed in the mountains in China, even Harvey the Big Rabbit on the silver screen, the courtyards in French monasteries, or the centerfold of Playboy. We, we certainly have a long-standing affection for the rabbit. For those of us who love wild fibers, the Angora rabbit isn't particularly wild, but it certainly has an important place in the world of natural fiber history.